We usually reserve muddy for Mondays, but it's uh, it's a uh, well, maybe they go to heavy, but it is a muddy Wednesday or sloppy Wednesday or hump day at Keeneland for Terry and Rich coming off of a, a nice day at parks yesterday. Couldn't string together any Don Johnson pick fours, but uh, I, I managed to hit my one trifecta bet. A couple of little odds and ends there along the way, Mr. Terry, but you have. Um, back to back days at 10 cents superfector that paid 150 bucks. So that's $400 in superfectors between the two of us for the first two days. We're shaping up to be that kind of card today at Keeneland before the rain or the wetness and the sloppy track moved all the stuff off the turf and reduced the number of horses. Otherwise, it would have been just kind of card where who knows what would have happened. Yeah. I know. I agree with that. And of course, there's a lot of scratches today because of the sloppy track. Mm -hmm. I guess they took the turf race off the turf. So, Yeah, there was two turf races. They both got taken off. Yeah. So anyway, that's the scenario there. Today, a little bit later on today, maybe it's a little bit sunnier or a little bit warmer at uh, Tampa Bay Downs. So let's see if indeed that's the case. But that's the free track today over at Guaranteed Tip Sheet. There is a link down in the description below. Yes, indeed, Tampa is Firm and fast. With nine races over there. It is oh, the scratches, excuse me, but there are nine races. But it is the free track. There is a link in the description below. So if you want some fast, firm, free racing, the place to go is guaranteed tip sheet for races at Tampa Bay Downs today. Nine of them. But we're going to go to Keeneland today. Terry on hump day with Terry Hay. What are we doing in that first race? All right. In this first race, we're going to go six furlongs. It's a maiden claiming race, $50,000 claiming price, a $54,000 purse. It's a Kentucky TV Devon Fund for maidens and fillies and mares, three-year-olds and upward. Yeah, the Kentucky Thoroughbred Development Fund. So the par speed figure for this race is 80, but, you know, the slot probably changes all of that, Terry. We do uh, one ten thousand a uh, simulations to get a sense of how the race may play out. But we also want to know how the race plays out in terms of track and speed bias. Obviously they're just starting the Keeneland meet. So these stats are from the last meet early speed does well, 16% of the time. So a little bit more than average win wire to wire, small rail bias, which looks like that benefit will go to blue eyed soul right now, two and three play under par four through seven, a small bonus, eight, and out, they get penalized. Only seven horses in this field with a couple scratches. With our 10,000 simulations, Terry, using speed figures, we want to calculate who has the maximum speed figure 10,000 times. Based on that, we create our own odds. So we want our simulation odds to be lower than post-time odds. And then what percent of the time that result hits or exceeds par again? 80. So you can see the three horse, about a 58% chance to go above par. We also want to know who's going to have the lead. We've mentioned speed does factor here. And then based upon our projected early pace, how likely the horse is to be in its comfort zone. Terry, take it away. Who's going to have the lead? Well, the three, seven, and nine show the most speed. I think that three is going to get out there, though, and get the lead. And if, they, if he does, he'll slop that slop back in those other horses' faces, and they'll probably just give up. Anyway, and then the three has an overlay of about, Three to five to two to one. The four has an overlay from three to one to four to one. The three and the four show the uh, only par plus numbers. And six, three, and five show the only C zone numbers. So you're throwing out the three here. That's interesting in your pick five to open it up in race number one. So he's got the four, six, eight, then the six, then the one, three, four, five, then the three, 10, 12, and then it looks like the one and seven after that. I see going to do Keeneland today, too. So make sure you take a look at that screenshot that, folks, we always can come back. We'll timestamp the races um, in the description on YouTube once we're done. If you haven't done so, kindly hit the subscribe button. Follow us on all of our social sites. If you're watching on Twitter, please retweet and follow us on Twitter. Uh, our Swiss Army, Sean, does a phenomenal job of updating people in the world of horse racing at horse race number two day on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Rumble, all of the above. Whatever's out there, we try to be a part of. All right, Terry. Um, the race shape, because we also do tri trip handicapping. The three wants to be on the lead, Loney. The four and nine, they've shown they want to close. The five, six, seven, and eight, those middle horses so far, none of them have been within five lengths of the leader. So speed matters. Looks look, look like the three could be. 
your lone E will have some competition from the seven. The seven will have to work its way through some traffic to get up there. The late pace belongs to the eight. Gift, gorgeous. That one has a little bit of an advantage over Goldie's locks. So these horses that have been in the back today probably move forward. Our top total pace horse in here, Terry, is the nine. Spiritual lady, a little bit better than the three, eight, or five. Those four tend to produce the winner 72, 73% of the time. Which one did you produce the winner at your handicapping? I like Blue Eyed Soul. The three ran second on an all weather track in the last race. Her best dirt speed is fast among today's starters, and she has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. Charm of the Songs, my second choice as a four horse, was bumped at the start and steadied in the first turn in the last race, so she can improve while returning to a sprint and has a high percentage winning jockey. Goldie's Lock, the five is my long shot, drops in class today. Nine, Spiritual Lady is my long, oh, I'm sorry, five is my third choice. The nine is my long shot spiritual lady. She drops in class today, has a high percentage winning jockey. Our normal bets are the uh, $2 win bet on her first choice, a dollar exacta box on her first two, a 50 cent trifecta box on her first three choices, and a 10 cent super, superfecta box on her first four choices. And I, I think the three horse two gets the lead, keeps the lead and doesn't give it up. All it has to do is run back to its Keeneland debut. And that would win this race here. Spiritual Lady, the nine horse, your long shot, is the closest to winning in its eight races so far has been the only time it ran close to this level, just a notch above it. So the drop back in class is helpful here. Charm of the Song, the four horse, gets the second call for me. Another horse, or well, there was one that scratched. One that's run on dirt two times. One that's run on all weather three times. By far the better races were on dirt. And then finally, the eight horse, Gift Gorgeous. This one, if it improves at all off of its debut, could be at par or better for this level. I'm going to invest all of my money that I have left in a trifecta three overall over to four, eight, nine. Hopefully the three wins and then it goes long shot, long shot, Terry. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be a good way to start. It's cloudy there in Lexington, Kentucky. The track is indeed sloppy. They're loading the seven horse right now. It is reluctant to go in. Give it a little shove, little shove, little, and then it finally says, all right, guys, I'm ready to go to work. So it may not be the happiest. The eight horse has one of the nicest tails I've ever seen on a horse. I don't know if that means anything. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, and then the nine horse, its tail is not quite as nice, but it walks into the gate like it has some intentions today. All right. They're ready to go, and they are indeed racing. The three and the nine have indeed broken Sharply, Mr. Terry, the three horse, as we suspected, would be the one that's on the lead. The nine horse, we thought that one would engage early as well. It has. The seven horse right now, the one that was reluctant to load, is in third. The five on the inside there, trying to make its way forward. Then you have the seven between horses. The eight going to go uh, three, four wide through the turn. Going to be a difficult trip in that respect. They're in the opening quarter in 22.44 seconds. I got a feeling, Terry that they might be going just a little bit too fast. Yeah. Of course, better be really good if it's going to hold on to the uh, to the win there. I don't know. They're coming around the closing corner. They're not going that fast. They are going kind of fast. But the three-horse continues to hold. I thought they were going a little longer than that. Three-horse continues to hold the lead. It and the nine are kind of bouncing off of one another. does look like the nine-horse is going to beat my three-horse here and, and absolutely screw up my, my uh, trifecta right away. But it does look like I'm going to get the, maybe I'm not, I don't know. The three horse is going to fade hard here at the end. It's going to go nine, five, three, and then I don't know what came after that. Maybe the eight, nine, five, three, and then the eight. Mm. That's the opener, folks. Of course, the second pick uh, is the one. I should have went the three horses overall over the three. That would have been the bet to go. All right. Yeah. So be it. We're off to race number two, Terry. This one, uh, there's no need to do any um, simulations or any of our trip handicapping because they're all making their first start. But what are they running for? Okay. for In, in this race, they're running for, um, let's see. It's Well, it's a short race, four and a half furlongs, and it's they're made in 80,000 K, and so it's an $80,000 purse. It's for maidens, two-year-olds. 
All right. So at race number two for four and a half furlongs, what we are looking for in a profile of a winner is speed. Yeah, 27% of the time they go wire to wire. Uh, most of the post positions are fair. The only ones that aren't fair are posts two and three. They're under par, Terry. So, well, this is straight up handicapping. First time starters, what do you got? Okay, number one, raise the bar uh, is a first time starter course, has the, whose dam won uh, three winners from two starters. Uh, his uh, sire wins eight or 16% of the races with first time starters, and he has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. The seven, Tuxedo Park, Dam one has three winners from five starters and one stakes winner and several good workouts in a row. The ten, uh, Tapper's Velo, uh, Valor, uh, he is a first time starter, of course, and has a bullet workout on April 4th. And he has a high percentage winning jockey. Misbehave in the fives, my long shot. Uh, he's got his, his dam has one winner from two starters and his sire wins 17% of the races with the first time starter has a high percentage winning, uh, trainer and jockey. You know, this race is so wide open because it's really hard to tell what they're going to do. So in my pick four, I use the one, five, six, seven, eight, and 10 with the three, four, with the three, 12, with the one, three, eight, and 10. And the cost is $48. So, yeah, you're right, Terry. There's no idea what's going to happen here. The one horse, the Wesley Ward horse, is probably going to capture all the money. And I Personally, I felt like the 15, the other Wesley horse, was the better of the two horses. But I, they essentially act as an entry. That's the old Terry angle, right? The, yep. if, the, if the trainer has two horses and he scratches one, the one he leaves behind usually per, uh, performs well. But I'm going to go with the seven. I, what, what I basically did is I went through and ranked the horses by workouts, then trainer, then breeding. So I put them in this order. I put the seven first, Tuxedo Park, the eight, Enduring Spirit, then the one horse, Raising the Bar. The trainer there, the works the works there weren't as good as the other horses. Then the two, Happy Flyer, taking a flyer with that one at 20 to one. And then the two after that I had were the six and the ten. So I'm going to do a pick four, two, one, two, six, seven, eight. And then the one, three, four, and then I'm going to go three, 11, 12. And I feel like in the back end is the safest end, but that's the race of life or the race of death, whichever way you look at it, if you win, because that connects the late pick four and the early pick four in race number five. Anything goes in the next race, folks. Uh, I just wouldn't take anything right now. What are the better saying in race number two? Looks like in race number two. They're looking at the, well, they haven't really gone that far, but right now the one horse is your favorite at two to one with the early money coming in. It really not taking a big jump there. Uh, I don't think they've really done anything yet because all the odds are still reflecting the, because um, they haven't settled the first race yet, it looks like. They haven't gone official, but once they go official, kind of take a look at that first race there, the next, the first wave of odds in race number two, because that could indicate where you might find some hidden value, uh, some lot of early money goes on one horse other than the two, the one horse could be an indication that the people at the track saw something and they have their bets in because they have a full day of work in front of them at the track. We'll come back and take a look at that in just a second. Race number three, Terry, it's a little clearer, I think, at least maybe, I don't know, but it's a <laughs> could be, but what are they doing here? Well, six furlongs, it's an allowance race. $30,000, purse 52000 For fillies and mares, three-year-olds and upward, which have started for a claiming price of $30,000 or less, or which have never won three races. So just looking at those preliminary odds, who's taken, well, the one horse says, I figured, has taken all of the money. The three horse, Mo Hare Sam, is a 30 to 1 morning line that's taken some money all the way down to 6 to 1, so keep an eye on that. The two horse to 20 to one has also got bet down a little bit from uh, 20 to one to 12 to one. And then that's about it for the horses. So it looks like the one, two, and three are taking early money. The one expected the two and three, perhaps some long shots with a chance at six furlongs on the Keeneland track. Well, remind me that when it's sloppy, but Normally, what you're looking for is a horse that has early speed. Again, 16% of the time they go wire to wire. It's a small rail bonus, two and three under par, four through seven, a small bonus, eight and out. The nine horse in that in that first race there did get wide 
So maybe wider on the track today is better than inside on the track today because of the swap and ran shotgun early on. So speed did hold up. Maybe outside speed a little bit better, Terry. What do you see happening in race number three from that respect? Well, the five shows the most speed. It shows a lot of speed. The only one that's even kind of close is the one. And then uh, none of them show any kind of an overlay that we can see. None show any par plus numbers. And six, five, three, and one are the ones that have the C zone numbers. Yeah, particularly the six, they're all by itself. Like I think it adds up to more than the rest on that C zone. Yeah. In race three, what we're looking for, look at this, perfectly balanced race. Everybody has should be in the spot they want to be in. Let's see if they line up like that, Terry. Early on, well, the five horse, the PC type, well, that one's eight points faster than the next closest horse in there. So that horse could get a pretty easy lead in this race. Hopefully it has a little bit more late legs. If you're back in that one, then we saw with the three. In this case, the three has the most late speed, about three quarters of a length quicker than everybody else. And probably about a length and a quarter off everybody but the five, about three lengths off that five. Going to have a lot of work to run that one down. The end of the race classic performer is your top total pace horse. It's a bling thing right there, too, with that uh, E designation. It does look to me like, Terry, the top three are in a class by themselves. So five, six, and three, how did you rank them? Well, I like the three first hill. She won her uh, two races in her own, now going for a hat trick, and she's a high has a high percentage winning trainer. I like the four best sellers. My second choice, she ran second on an all-weather track in her last race, and she has a high percentage winning uh, jockey. Then, let's see, I think the eight got scratched, didn't it? Mm, it looks like it's not in there, no. So you got the one, and then yeah. what after that? I'll, I'll update it. Okay, I have the one, uh, which is... Uh, Finished third versus uh, on all weather in her last race. Has a good uh, five furlong workout. And then uh, let me look here real quick. And then this, we're in the third race. Probably, probably, let's see. I got to see who's scratched. <laughs> well, you got the two, the seven, and the eight are scratched. So yeah. you have the one, three, four, five, and six are the only horses left in the race. So you got the uh, one, three, and four. So it's between the five or the six. Yeah, I'd go with the five, classic performer. Uh, should improve by going to uh, to the dirt. Mm -hmm. And has all that early speed to boot. Uh, as for me, I like the uh, four horse as my top choice. That one that ran at Keeneland one time, and it won by 11 lengths. It was the only race at Keeneland and by far her best race. So a repeat of that, and maybe some decent odds too. I don't know with the field tightening up if that'll be the case or not. The three horse did run the top last race speed figure. Three points clear of the next closest horse. Andrew Byer says that's the barrier you're looking for. So if the godfather of speed figures says look for horses with three point better than anybody else, well, by golly, I'm going to look for them. But I am a little bit worried about this horse because that last race was so much different than all of the rest that regression is a strong possibility unless the horse just found a new gear. The one horse in color has hit par for this level, which is solid. That means if it does it again, has a really good chance to win. This one, its best races were on dirt, and the lone W came at six furlongs. And then that five horse is another one of those horses that on the dirt, the only time it was on the dirt, it won, it was at the distance, and has all of that early speed with all of the other early speed cashing out today to be on the sloppy sidelines. And then two middle races here and an eight race card on this sloppy hump day in Kentucky. Terry, you're going to go a little bit longer this time. Yeah, we're going to stretch out to a mile and an eighth, and it's a main, main claiming race, $20,000 claiming price, $43,000 purse. It's for maidens, three year olds, and upward. Christopher, I'm interested in race two with all of those um, first time starters. Your thoughts on why you went with the six or seven in race number two as your selections. And then race number three, he's got the five horse to win with the four and one in an exact and trifecta box. He's boxing them up, folks. So we'll see what he thinks about race number four. But yeah, kindly, if like Christopher or Kaisi or Melvin, you have some thoughts on the Keeneland card, thoughts that agree with us, disagree with us. Other tracks today that you have your eye on, uh, please kindly hit us up in the comment section. Any interaction, thumbs up, likes, retweets, subscriptions, coming back to view the show again. 
Any of that sort of stuff really helps boost our algorithmic scores with Yahoo, with Google, with YouTube, with Twitter, Facebook, all of the above. So we greatly appreciate all of your uh, interactivity with us. In uh, race number four, Terry, at a mile and an eighth, they don't run a whole bunch of them, but when they do, uh, it does favor early speed, surprisingly. Only 11%, so a fair number, win wire to wire. So far, nobody's won on the rail, and that was in the last meet. Two and three were almost equally as bad, so you kind of want to stay away from those horses. Four through seven almost played fair, so that was a good place to be. Really, the best place to be, bar none, was on the outside where you'll find the Buffalo girls, Terry. The Buffalo girls here, do any of them have speed? It doesn't look like it, but it looks like any of them really can get the lead. Yeah, all, all of them really show some kind of speed, although the seven has the most. And then the 12 shows an overlay from about four to five to two to one, and the 12 also has the only par plus number. Mm -hmm. And then all but the four, 11, and 12 have uh, some kind of C zones. And maybe in this race, you know, this made in, this claiming race, being in the right position can be a great place to be. So far, the 4, 6, 10, and 11, not been within five lengths of the leader at the finish line. You have the 7 and the 12 wanting to be four. So the 7, yeah, Wahatchi. Wuhatchi. Wuhatchi. All right, Wuhatchi. Well, if Wuhatchi, the 7 horse, can get to the lead, if I can pronounce it correctly, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if I did. Well, has a you're... shot to go wire to wire, Loney. Um, so that would be a good positional advantage for the seven. It doesn't really look like it has a lot of speed to its inside, too. So it should get to the lead. It's going to have to do something about that dark red late pace, though. The end of the race, top of the streets. Should be in a good pressure position. A little bit more late speed than the 11 horse. Those two should be side by side, essentially the same. And then as you look at the top total pace, those two, again, six points clear of Curlin's in charge who's five points clear of Vino DeFanza. So maybe 11, 12 with the three and put those in some combination for an exact or a trifecta could be a winning ticket. Terry, what's your winning ticket? Well, I like the three. Uh, Curlin's in charge. Uh, he drops in class a day, has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. The 12 top of the steel second or street is my second choice. Drops in class today, has a high percentage winning trainer who wins 37% of the races when he takes a horse down two plus classes and his best start speed, uh, speed is fastest among today's starters. Moon over Montgomery, the four, is my third choice. Finished second in his last race and has a trainer who wins 20% of the uh, route races that he runs a horse in, in this for the second time. And then photo op to two is my long shot. He drops in class today. No additional bets for me here today, but I did want to say hello to Armando Garcia this morning. Indeed, Armando giving us a bunch of love before the show even starts. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say thank you, too, to Jay Marco. Because of Jay, we will see you in the winner's circle. And then uh, Lori Mudrow. Thank you, Lori, for joining us today. We appreciate that. And race number four, Christopher chiming in with the two horse to win. Photo op, Terry's long shot. Your horse of the day there, almost one of them. Two with the 12 and the three. I like the 12 horse. I think that horse, Terry... Top of the street is the horse in the field that's most likely to break par. It did run the best speed figure last time out, and it's going to compete at the lowest level of its career. Number 11, Okona. This one was well bet in its debut, Mr. Terry. And then Blood. It's going to get Lasix for the second time, and many trainers and jockeys and agents have said to us their preference is second time Lasix. Over first time Lasix, we'll see if that plays out today at a big price. And this one does have a pair of solid workouts since uh, its last race. So maybe that Lasix is going to take hold. Curlin's in charge. The three horse, Terry, drops in class after being better with its early pace last time out. Does have a pair of workouts since then to improve its late race stamina. And then finally, the five horse, Causa Ruckus. This one's very capable of popping a big race in its third career start. So there's two patterns I look for. One with first times, like horses making their second start. A lot of times you're looking for improvement in that second start. And when they don't, many times that improvement actually comes in the third race. If it doesn't come today, it's probably not coming. So cause a ruckus, I'm thinking we might see that today because it does have a nice pair of nice workouts too in between starts.
Well, a prob there's a problem there, though. That five is scratched. Oh, it got scratched out? Yeah. All right, so we can't go with the five, so we're going to go with the two in there instead, making okay. a ruckus. That's uh, another class dropper in there, Mr. Terry, okay. causing a ruckus, and uh, with that, making the classic third start after a layoff. You hear, uh, well, so be it. No cause of ruckus in there. Maybe keep an eye on that one for next one. Trainer probably didn't want to run that one on the uh, muddy track, right? That's right. All right. The other horse race in the middle of the card. No scratches on this one. This is the beginning of the second late double. It's also the race of life or the race of death, depending upon where you are at. So if your pick four is already over, it's the race of life, new life for the late pick four. If uh, your pick four is coming to a close and you're starting a new one, boy, you better get the winner or two tickets go bye-bye, Mr. Terry. So in the race of life or death, what are they running for? All right. Well, it's a six furlong race. It's another allowance race, $10,000 uh, allowance race. It's a purse of 50000 for fillies and mares four years, years old and upward, which have started for a claiming price of 10000 or less in 2023 or 2024. Yeah. And you know, we've talked about six furlongs a few times already, but speed does pretty well in there. A little bit of a rail bonus for Goshen. Two and three, a little bit under par. Four through seven. Small bonus on the outsides, not so good. So you're looking for some inside speed in the fifth race, Terry. And, uh, well, there's plenty of horses to pick from to take the lead early on. That's right. That 10, uh, 7, and 3 all show some uh, pretty similar speed. So it's really anybody's guess who knew who's going to get there. The 3 has an overlay from about 2 to 1 to 3 to 1, and the 10 has a very small overlay from about – uh, six to five to seven to five. And then the 10, three, and eight show the only par plus numbers. All but the five and six have some kind of C zones. Indeed. Our trip handicapping tells us, well, you have a bunch of them, Terry, despite, um, well, a bunch of them really here, very versatile. So they can go forward. They can go back. The four horses, your lone closer. It's shown that's what it wants to do. The five and the six could be lead dependent. Are they going to get the lead? It looks like they might struggle to get the lead as the five's all the way down here. The six is at the bottom of the pack, so maybe a little bit of false bravado when the gates open and then they tail off. That should open up the door for this group here with some flexibility. Let's see if any of them are going to be flying at the end. It does look like Proto Magic. That one will be coming the hardest at the end along with Ghostly Knight. And there's that 10 horse in there too, which you talked about a little bit earlier on with the par number and the early speed. At the end of the race, it looks like Ghostly Knight, six points clear of Samarita, and then Proto Magic. A little bit of a kind of trickle-down effect all the way down to here. Again, top four horses, usually where you find your winner, Terry. Looks like the three and the ten are where you and I both settled. We just put them in reverse order. Yeah, I like that ten horse, Samarita. She wanted uh, six out of seven of her last Seven, well, six out of her last seven races has the highest speed figure at today's distance, and her best dirt speed is fast among today's starters. The three ghostly night finished in uh, in the money in four of her last four starts, winning two of those starts, and has a high percentage winning jockey. And then the eight, uh, she ran is my third pick. She ran second versus tougher on an all weather track in her last race and drops in class today. Goshen, the one, is my long shot. Finished in the money in six of the last eight starts, winning three of the races and drops in class today. Uh, 50 cent pick four. I think this wide open race. So I'm using one, three, eight, and 10 with a four, seven, 16 with the two, five. And I'm finishing up with six, seven, nine, 14. That's a $48 ticket. I, I think I, 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 I don't, I may, all the races are probably wide open. It's horse racing, but I think this is one of the clear races on the card, even though there's 10 horses in the field, maybe. I think the three and the 10 are the ones to beat. So I probably just said, take every other horse, but the three and the 10 and you'll be all right. It was a tough call for me, you know, flipping a coin between the three and the 10, but I took the inside horse because the inside post positions are better than the outside post positions. So they do get penalized from eight and out. And this horse does have the top total pace of six points clear of the next best horse. And in between races, two very electric workouts. Number 10, that one, speaking of electric workouts, Samarita. Been working out here at Hawthorne, where I live in Chicago. Next Monday, next Sunday, the Illinois Derby. You can play a contest for 800 bucks online. 
through ExpressBet, I believe. With that $800, um, you have to bet win, place, or show. You have to bet exactors or doubles. There are some other rules. You can find them over at clubhawthorne.com. We have no sponsorship from them. I will be competing in it live. It's an $800 buy-in. There's no fee. You keep what you make. You don't have to bet at all. But if you want to qualify, you do have to bet at all. I think at four races, you have to make at least $100 bets. And in the Illinois Derby, you have to bet at least 200 bucks. But the winner, I think, gets six grand plus a trip to either the handicapping contest for the Breeders' Cup or the National Handicapping Contest. So uh, if it's something you're thinking about, go over to clubhawthorne.com, take a look at those rules. You can play on Express Bet no matter where you live in the country, provided you can open an account there. Uh, number 10 has been working out there like it's running across coals of fire, Terry, trying to get across the track as fast as it can. And uh, stomped the field by 12 in its only race at Keeneland. Number eight, Proto Magic, the uh, third pick for me, like you. Source real close to winning five races in a row. Also a class dropper in here. And then Forever Home, the seven horse gets my long shot call in there, Terry. Has tons of early pop. Might be the one they have to catch as they'll own E-horse in here. Really phenomenal off the charts improvement through the first half mile last out. Two workouts to give the horse more late race stamina to go along with those turbo boosters when the gates open. Three races to go. Race number six, Terry. This one was supposed to be on turf. That's why you see so much red because the trainers didn't want to run them on the slop. So they're not running for turf, but they are still running for the same purse. Yeah, and it's still a one-mile race, and it's an allowance race, eleven uh, hundred and ten thousand dollars a purse, one hundred ten thousand. But now it's on the main track because uh, it's taken off the purse. It's for uh, four-year-olds and upwards, which have never won a race other than a maiden claiming or starter, or which have never won two races. Yeah, and we don't have any data on a mile as far as the profile of a winner. Because there are no races at a mile today. So, Terry, we'll just go straight to our simulations because we always have those. When, like the postman, rain, snow, sleet, or shine, Terry and I have our sims. Yeah, that's right. Look at all them scratches, lots of scratches. The 16 has the most uh, speed in here. And if it can get out of that gate, should uh, get there first. Although that five's got uh, some speed too. So, it just depends on who gets the best break. And then the seven has an overlay from seven to one to 12 to one. And the 16 has an overlay from five to two to eight to one. 16, 15, and seven all show par plus numbers. And they all have some kind of C zones. Mm -hmm. As far as our uh, reduced race shape, look at that, Terry. The 15 is the only one that's been close. Well, not really. It was a pressure closer type, so some versatility. Everybody else in here so far has wanted to close. So in this scenario, someone's got to get to the lead, Terry. And, I mean, I guess that could be a good place to be, a little more confidence. That'll be the five horse, but the 16 will be there. The one will be there. The seven should be around the mix, too. Even the four are a chance. They're all within eight points of each other, so anybody can send. Looking at the late speed here, Terry, again, pretty – and they think they just kind of reversed the order a little bit there from top to bottom. So maybe the one's in the middle will have the best chance to win. According to our top total pace, Terry, there are four of them in here that are five points clear of the other two. So maybe the in this book looks like probably the most competitive race on the card. Maybe those four horses produce the winner. Maybe the bottom two. Who do you got? I have the 16 to solve. Uh, he won his last race. Uh, his breeding suggests he will like the grass and his dam produced two turf winners. And then the four Malibu Springs, my second choice, finished the money in all four of the last four starts and win, winning the last one, of course. And he has a high percentage winning trainer, the seven Carcano. He drops in class today. His dam produced two turf winners, although none of that turf stuff means anything now. And then he has a high percentage winning jockey. The five coach uh, meeting in my long shot has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. 16 horse in this field, Terry, is the one I think will beat two. Best race came in its lone Keeneland run. Does have some nice workouts prepping out. Carcano, or Carcano, the seven horse. Second up for me in here, Mr. Terry, taking a drop from a non-graded stakes race. Been off since August, so been on the sidelines for a bit. The two very best races that this horse had were on Lasix, Terry. Didn't get to use it in the non-graded stakes race. 
Going to get that Lasix back today, and that could be the difference maker for a horse that uh, might need that stuff. The 15 Gamer, the three races, it is one in a row, all with different running styles. It's run on the front, it's run in the middle, and it's one on the back. That's awesome. Looks to me like it's more like an all-weather horse than maybe a dirt or sloppy horse, but maybe that translates to the off-track. We'll see. And then finally, the one horse overbore the rail horse in there, lone horse in the field that actually has a win on an off track. So that one might just pop out to the front and say, you know what? This is my favorite surface. See y'all later. Race number six. Do we have time for race yeah. number? Well, you got about, uh, what, two minutes, I think? Yeah, it looks minutes. like three minutes. So let's just kind of review the odds right now. The one horse as expected is your favorite at six to five. The two and the three continue to take money beyond their morning line odds. You see anybody else that's like that in there? The six, the seven, they're right in there with their morning line odds pretty close. The 10 horse, again, that one's pretty close too. It's right on its morning line odds. So looks like the one and the 10 are your two favorites right now, Mr. Terry. Um, we'll see if indeed that's how it plays out. But let's try to run through race number, uh, what are we on, seven? Yeah, yes. Let's try to pop through race number seven before they pop through the gates for race number two. All right. Well, it's a mile and 16th. It's an optional claiming race. It's a $100,000 claiming price. First, 110000 it's for three-year-olds and which have never won a, a race other than maiden claiming starter or state bred, or which have never won two races or claiming price of a hundred thousand. So at that buck sixteen, stalkers do good. Fourteen percent of the time, they do good enough to get on to the front, stay on the front. There is an inside three bonus, so keep an eye on that. Four through seven under par, eight and out gets a little bit of a bonus too. So a barbell race. Don't be in the middle. Be in the be in the. Uh, be on the inside or be on the outside so maybe one or two on the inside and one on the outside where's the speed at well the speed is in the port that shows the very most speed as you can see there and then uh, along with that the five has some speed uh mm -hmm. it, am i might no i'm wrong here the four does not have any speed does it yeah he does the kitty hall oh, there we the go speed. it's yeah, on yeah, the yeah. race okay and then the five shows an overlay of uh, about uh, four to five to seven to two. And the eight has an overlay from almost six, well, six and a half to one to 12 to one. The five has a par plus number. And then all of them have C zones. Yep, indeed. So in uh, race number seven, let's see how they like to track out on the race. Well, this is a race where most want to be middle back. Again, you got a trio with some flexibility in there. Speed, again, in this kind of situation, might be have the advantage. That four horse, indeed, one length quicker than everybody else, Terry. That's pretty good. Will it be able to maintain that lead in the end? It does look like Hartend has a huge two-length advantage over everybody else down the stretch. Your top total pace horse is Rocketeer. That is eight points clear of Hartend. A uh, huge late pace there, there, Terry. Who do you got to win this one? All right. I like Rotten, Rocketeer. That's my pick of the day of the five. One is debut race at Kingland, has a high percentage winning trainer who wins 34% of the races when using first-time Lasix. His best dirt speed is fast among today's starters, and he has a bullet workout on March 31st. All in boxes are marked off. Two, Native Land, my second choice, won his last race at Oakland. Uh, he has a high, uh, the highest last race speed rating, and he has a high percentage winning jockey and trainer. And then the three hardened is my third choice, finished in the money in three of the last four starts, winning the, one of the starts and drops in class today. Also has a bullet workout on April 3rd. Number nine, Gambler's Trail is my, uh, tell is my uh, long shot. He won his last race and has a high percentage winning drop jockey and trainer. I'm going to bet $10. Or I'm going to bet $16 or $10 to win, $16 to place, and then a $1 exacta key box, the five with the two, three, nine. I am going to go with the two horse top pick there, Terry. I know it's a dead last on my top total pace, but um, actually, I have the five horse first. I don't know why I got that backwards. So let me go change that in my picks. I don't have typo error because Rocketeer does get the first call for me on my notes. So I must have pressed the wrong button. Any improvement from Rocketeer's debut? And it's probably the most probable winner on the card. Number two, Late of Land. That one um, hit par last out. Two races on and off track with a win and a second, where even in the second, he had the lead in the stretch. Three workouts since, including a bullet workout. The number three, Harton, drops from a grade three. And last time out, it's it's late pace number is like 123. You don't even see that from like top end stakes horses. And then finally, Kitty Hawk, the four horse, 
Lots and lots and lots of speed as a two-year-old, mostly faded, did go wire to wire when it finally did break its maiden as a two-year-old. And guess what? All that speed today gets a dose of Lasix. That means that's going to help that horse today, Terry. Hold that speed deeper into the race. And they're loading up for race number two. And I can imagine that this could end up being a, a long gur. Um, it's going to take a while to get all these two-year-olds into gates there right now. All so right. the one horse is your favorite. That is six to five. Then next up on the odds is the 10 horse at seven to two. The next horse on that mix looks like it is the seven, which is six to one. And then after that comes the six horse. It's also six to one. Okay. Um, next after that is the looks like the two horse at 12 to one. And then the th Three horse at 20 to one. Okay. Uh, are they all ready to go? I don't know, but I no. want to bet a, a, key, a $1 key box. I'm going to use the one with all. In which race? In this race right here, the second race. You're going to do that? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Just just for fun. All right. One That's with what, all. I do it all the time, So, and I do pretty well doing that. So I'm going to do a, a $1 exact a key box using the one with all and they're off and running the one horse does indeed have the lead horse is indeed on the lead there not surprising for a wesley ward horse also six to five and we both have a bunch of horses in our pick four so we're probably gonna regret that but let's see the two horse has made his way up onto the rail there it's going to give that one horse it looks like a run for its money but the one horse has the wide trip so that's the one that's probably going to get the best run into the finish line. You got the eight horse coming up aggressively on the outside. I don't know if he's going to get there. Yeah. Of course, Terry, we should have just singled a one. That would yeah. have been the way to go, right? Yep. Wesley Ward. Yeah. Well, it's going to go one, seven, one, seven. And then it looks like the nine and maybe the 10. One, seven, nine, and 10. Uh, two. Bad that five didn't get in there <laughs> at 28 to one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, yeah, we, I, I should, yeah. I mean, we got the one to one on the uh, pick four. Yeah. Not going to help us at all, Terry. Oh, but you know, yesterday you said if it's a Wesley Ward horse in one of these two year old races, you should always bet it. So, yeah. Well, I knew he was going to be one to one. Or down in that level, just because he is a Wesley Ward. I figured whichever one he left in, the one or the 15, yeah, that horse was going to be your favorite, was going to be a big favorite no matter what because he gets his horses ready for specifically these types of races. And then if the horse runs well, what you'll see, if that horse is any good or maybe the 15 horse, in all likelihood, he'll take those horses over to the Royal Ascot in June yeah, and see if those horses have the ability to run for that big money as a two-year-old over in uh, England. So that's usually what you see from these Keeneland horses from Wesley Ward. So maybe that one horse goes over. I still have a feeling that he feels like the 15 horse was the better of the two horses. Scratch it out because he doesn't want to run it on the slop, wants to see what he actually has um, otherwise. Well, the other reason is that he has an also he was also eligible and there was no other horse that scratched to allow him to get it in there. So Yeah, well, he, he may have needed two others to scratch with. He would have. Maybe he wanted to scratch himself with the one, but he wouldn't have got in with the 15, so just left yeah. it be. Absolutely. If it was the only other also eligible, I wouldn't have been surprised to see the 15 one. All right. One last race for you and me, Mr. Terry. Today, we're going to be off tomorrow, I believe. Uh, yep. That's going to be the case. So the last race of the week for you and me on Friday, we will return for four and Fridays with – 22 to 1 Thomas for the Grand National, otherwise known as the Roller Derby of horse racing. What is it? 34, 35 horses jumping over just too many fences over a race that's like 18 miles long, <laughs> all hyperbole. But uh, at the end, there's like three jockeys hanging on to horses that are walking to the finish line. Yeah. Lots and lots of fun there. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about race number eight. It was supposed to be on the turf again, one that's been moved to the dirt. That's true, and it's but it's still a mile and sixteenth. It's an allowance race, hundred twenty thousand dollar allowance, hundred twenty thousand dollar purse. 
It's for four-year-olds and upward, which have never won 18,000 twice other than maiden claiming starter or state bred, or which have never won three races. And at a mile and a 16th on the dirt, which we will see in race number seven. Again, inside three bonus, four through seven under par, eight and out, get a bonus. You want to be close to the pace, but not necessarily on the lead. Although if you're on the lead 14% of the time, you shall win. Terry, in this limited number of horses, brrr, well, and none of them, this is never mind this 100%, Terry, because there isn't a par score for this race. So that's no. meaningless. But go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I figured that out. Yeah. Anyway, the nine shows uh, the most speed in here of the horses that are left, followed up by the seven. It could go head to head between those two. The seven uh, has the uh, overlay of about four to one to nine to two. And the nine has an overlay from uh, almost four to one to 12 to one. All of the horses that are left have C zones. And then as far as the limited track trip, uh, you have three that want to be up front. Though the nine has versatility, it can fit in the middle too. So that might be your Sesame Street horse. Unlike the others, six and 14 have shown they want to close. Early on, it does look like not normal. The EP type has a little bit more early speed than pipeline. Those two are much quicker than the rest, so those two should be the ones that are out in the front with everybody else giving chase, except for maybe he got this. going to be pretty far off the early pace there, maybe as much as three lengths, though in a short field might scoot up towards the front. He got this, does have the most late speed, but maybe not enough to make up this gap here. We'll see when the race is run. It does look like not normal. Is an eight-point total pace favorite over the rest of the field, Terry, so maybe the nine sits in that shotgun position, and then runs right by everybody else, just like we saw the nine do in the opener. It Start one way and end the same. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I like the seven, though, Pipeline. He has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. has a good workout on March 31st. 14 is my second choice. He's got this. Ran second his last race. Nine, not normal. Uh, he's my third pick. He also ran second in his last race. And then the number six horse, Lincoln Highway, is a long shot. He drops in class today. I have no money left to do any other bets in here. So, well, I'm going to go with the seven. He has the most back class and the prep works for the first race since January, unquestionably, are lights out. Lincoln Highway, this one has the most late speed in here and should be really in this race a lot, lot closer to the pace than ordinary. Woodcock Flight, this one, is making its third start in the U.S., improved in race number one and race number two after shipping over from Ireland. They like the turf over there, Terry, and turf sometimes translates to slop, and its recent workouts are almost as good as the sevens, so be on the lookout for that. He ain't going to be 30 to 1, mostly because of all the scratches. And then Not Normal is that top total pace horse, eight points clear of everybody else. Though he was running in tier two or tier three tracks before going to Turfway Park last out, does have the top off track number. I just don't know that he's seen horses even in this reduced field of the same kind of caliber. As you said, Terry, we're all out of money. We're all out of picks for this week. Here are our full picks so far at Keeneland, the nine horse winning the first race, the one horse winning the second race. And then here are our thoughts for the rest of the day. Terry, um, any final thoughts from you before we part company and get back together again on Monday for Parks, Tuesday for Parks, probably Keeneland again next Wednesday and Thursday. All right. Well, I wanted to bring up the Christopher D'Souza in the seventh race, wants to bet 20 to win on the number three. That's his pick of the day. He always seems to get his pick of the day in my same race, and it's always a horse I don't have in mind. Anyway, he uh, he also wants to do a three four two exacta box, I guess, is, and trifecta box. Other than that, I just want you to all be uh, safe today and and have a great day. Uh, and go ahead and be careful if you got any bad weather or anything like that. Give your loved ones a hug and a and a you know kiss, whatever. Tell them how you feel, especially if you love them, because you never know what's going to happen from day to day. Now, you never can tell what will happen from day to day, but I knew, no, again, we'll be back on Friday for the Grand National, Monday and Tuesday for Parks, Wednesday, Thursday, most likely Keeneland for next week. And I do know that we appreciate the thumbs up on Facebook as well as on YouTube. We appreciate the retweets, all the interactivity, your comments and your suggestions. A lot of what we do on the show has come about as suggestions 
from all of us in this community. And, and then no matter what you're doing for the rest of this hump day with hay in the mud at Keeneland, or if you're going to take the free bets today on the fast track over at Tampa Bay Downs for guaranteed tip sheet, there is a link in the description kindly below. We certainly hope they all have God's grace, God's favor, and end up in Jay Marco's winner's circle. Indeed. We look forward to seeing you Friday. Sorry about the day off, but until then, make it a great day. Thank you.